Hello everybody, Jesse here from Jason Spirit. Good to have you guys back in this shell series. And today we're going to be discussing about the command line arguments and specifically also about the prototype of the main function that processes the argument counts, which is argc and the argument vectors argv. And if what I say did not make any sense to you at all, that's why you're here, isn't it? So without further ado, let's just get started. So guys, before we get into definitions, I just thought to show us um, the practicality of the command line arguments. So to do that, I created this file called command line args.c and I'm passing out the build output to this file called command line args. I'm gonna hit enter. And right now I'm gonna execute this um, program. And on the same line, I'm gonna pass in this text which says coding is fun. So I'm gonna hit enter and watch what's gonna happen. So guys, as you can see, we have a bunch of outputs which we're going to analyze right now. The first of them, which you can see is argc, and it tells me I have four. Now, argc stands for arguments count. This counts the number of command line arguments you pass into a program. So command line arguments basically have to do with the arguments you're passing into a program at the time of executing it. And it tells me we have four. And why is that? Because if this is a program and then we're passing in coding is fun to this program, okay, um, we should have three, but it says four. Now it says four because in C, the name of the program is regarded as the first argument. So as you can see right here, argv0, which on the other hand stands for argument vectors. And we're going to explain this later. Okay, so the first argument right here is regarded as the program itself so that's as you can see right here argv0 happens to be the name of the program argv1 is coding argv2 is is and argv3 is fun so i hope this makes sense so let me just show you some write-up which i've done as you can see right here it says command line arguments these are arguments passed from the command line to the c program when they are executed so what we passed in right here are referred to as a command line argument. But just like a little um, point to note is that even the program itself is regarded as an argument as the first argument in C. The next thing, as you can see right here, is the argc. So argc stores the number of command line arguments passed by the user, including the name of the program. And that's why argc right here wasn't three but four because it included the name of the program. Argument vectors at V. So this happens to be a null terminated array of strings, or you could say character pointers, used to store the entire list of command line arguments. So as we're gonna see um, as we proceed in this tutorial, argument vectors right here is actually a null terminated array of strings. So all these strings are going to be stored in some sort of array so that you can access. So that's why you see that we can index it because under the hood, it's an array data structure holding this information for us. So I hope this makes sense. So let me quickly show you how all this works together. So if you're new to command line arguments, which I believe a lot of us are here, you'll be aware of this prototype of the main function that you pass in void. Void means that this accepts no parameters. But if you want to deal with command line arguments, you'd need to be aware of this prototype of the main function which you see right here. So the first parameter is an integer with the name argc and the second parameter is a character pointer array with the name argv. So these names can actually be changed but I'm going to be sticking with them for the sake of convention. Next I'm printing out argc in this format. I have the text argc with a colon and a space just like you have right here. Okay, and I'm printing out the value of argc. Now, like I told you guys, the number of command line arguments will be stored in this variable argc. So once you print it out, it's going to be four in this case because that's the number of command line arguments we have. So next, we'll be running a for loop to print out the elements of argv. But to understand this better, I think we need to see the, um, the way argv looks like under the hood, okay? So as you can see right here, argv is a null terminated array of strings. So you have this array of strings that ends with this null character. Now, how does this work? When you pass in your program and the command line arguments, these are actually just strings, okay? 
what ACV does is that it takes these strings, and if you remember string to it's going to tokenize this string and store them inside this array data structure and terminate the array with this null character. And the implication of this build is that we can now access our command line arguments by referencing their index inside this array. So in our case, we want to print out every single element in this array in this format. So to do that, we're using a simple for loop. And this for loop will run as long as agvi i is not equals to null. So this is the same thing as typing in agvi i is not equals to null. They're basically the same thing. And for each iteration, we want to print out agv. We want to print out the index inside square braces and then the value at that index, as you can see right here. So i represents the index. Agv with this square braces i represents the value at that index. So that's what you have right here. So at agv0, which is index 0, we want to print out the value at that index. Same applies for agv1, the value at 1, and so on and so forth. So that's how I came about these outputs. Another thing to take note of, guys, is that rather than using a character pointer array right here as a syntax for agv, you could use a double pointer. So if I use a double pointer and I save this, go ahead and compile this again, and um, let's run it, you can see that my code is still working perfectly. Nonetheless, there's actually a slight difference between using the double pointer and a pointer to character array, but it's beyond the scope of this tutorial. But for now, just know, guys, that these are the two flavors you can use to represent agv in C. So, guys, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, this video is supposed to be a prerequisite to the next one where we actually get to create our own command line arguments implementation. So, currently, we are using the standard one in C, but very soon, we're going to be creating ours and we're going to be seeing how we can implement it in building our own shell program so you want to make sure you watch out for that so if you're new here please consider subscribing if you like the video as usual give it a like share it with your friends and if you feel like you have something to say to me and maybe you feel there's like something i did not touch feel free to leave a comment and that is from me for now i'll see you in the next one